Yo, 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 yo. Yeah. We are back at it again. This is the IVP with Dr. IBZ, the Imperfect Vent Podcast. We are back at it again. How's everyone's week going? How's everyone's, you know, it's midweek, you know. Freaking, I feel like I feel like I haven't left this chair, to be real with y'all, because we're at episode 132. 132, y'all, 132, man. How's everyone going, man? How's everyone doing? You know, we watching the NBA, man. The NBA, it's getting lit. It's getting pretty lit. We got uh, Hemothy Butler still at it again. I think he got a little bit injured, so we'll see what happens game two. Um, we got the Phoenix Suns. They're down two, so we'll see what happens with that. You know what I mean? Phoenix Suns, they're down two. Um, what else is there? Um, you know, come on. You know, like, the Joker, he don't play that. He don't play that. Also, there is, before I give you guys the, you know, the congratulations, you guys already know, Harden, James motherfucking Harden went off. Like, when they say fear the beard, fear the motherfucking beard. This nigga went off, bro. I, I'm, I, bro, the last time I've seen that was, like, when he was on Houston, like, last time I seen that is when I was playing 2K with Harden, and I dropped 40 with Harden. Like, this nigga was just catching the ball and shooting it, and everything was going in, bro. This nigga, would, the moment you gave him that much room, like less than an inch of room, bow, in your face. Splash, splitty splash. One to, gonna coming through with the jab step. Bow, splash. Coming through with another one. Bow, splash. I'm like, yo, this nigga's going off. Like, okay. Let's see what happens. And then you got, yo, the Lakers versus the Warriors. Dog, Steph Curry, this nigga dropped 50 points. 50 blood clot. He dropped a 50 piece on the fucking, um, on uh, Sacramento. He's like, yo, we're going to round two. Now he's going to face LeBron. Now that is going to be something. That's going to be a sight to see, right? Because round of applause to the older teams letting these young niggas know that, hey, bruh, it's still us. As long as we're on the court, we here. I like that. I like to see that because the way that the shit was moving, I'm like, oh, man, if LeBron does not make the playoffs, like, I don't know. I don't know. Nigga made the playoffs and said, what? Guess what? Not only are we going to make the playoffs, we're going to make round two. And and we're going to make it hard for the other team. Pause. But they're facing the Warriors. Oh, this shit is like... So, I want Heat. I I didn't think they would make it this far. So, I'm going for the Heat. The Knicks win. Who cares? Because the Knicks haven't been that far in a minute. I don't mind seeing that. That's what I want for the East. I think um, Celtics are playing Philly, so I don't give a fuck about them two teams. Then you got, um, on the West, you got Phoenix versus, uh, I think it's the Nuggets, Joker. Say Joker. And then you got, no, it's Denver. (laughs) Fucking idiot. Dog. Dude, what the fuck? Denver. I always get Denver and Utah mixed up. I don't know why. I don't know why. But just allow me, okay? Anyways, so because they have similar color patterns and shit, so it always just throws me the fuck off. So, whoopsie daisy. Anyways, so you got them, Suns, and Denver. And then you got, um, who's the other two? God damn. The Suns and Denver. Who's the other two on the West? Oh, yeah. Lakers and the Warriors. So, I want the Lakers and I want the Heat. That would be a sick ass. Wait, wouldn't that be a repeat? That probably be a repeat because of the bubble. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Hopefully, we see that. Now, 
Round of applause. Two, the boy, the one and only, Joel Embiid, my African brother. He got the MVP. They were not going to give it to Joker for a third time in a row. They ain't doing that. They gave it to my brother, Joel Embiid. Let's go. Joel Embiid won the MVP. Oh, he's crying. Ah, oh, Joel. Ah, oh, man. That's so wholesome to see. He's been fighting for this shit for the longest time. Was he of the players like, yo, if I make All-Star, Rihanna, will you want to date with me or some shit like that? Hold on. We got to find that. Because I remember that shit, yo. Joel Embiid. Rihanna. Y'all don't remember that? I didn't even spell that. Joel Embiid hinted at Rihanna turning him down for not being an All-Star back in 2014. Right? So, if he made All-Star the next year or something, like, she was, she was, she was going to go on a date with him. But I, I don't think it happened. But anyways, you went from that to the MVP. My brother. Apparently, he started playing basketball when he was, like, 15 years old. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to look up his uh, IMDb. Not IMDb. What? IMDb? Like, yo, yo. Dude, what the fuck? You mean his biography? His Wikipedia? His wiki? Embiid was born in the... Oh, I can't pronounce that. Yaounde Cameron. To military office Thomas Embiid and wife Christine. He played volleyball and soccer. And then he was going to play professional volleyball in Europe, but they didn't start playing basketball at 15. Modeling his game after Hakeem Olajuwon. Look at that. My brother. So, he had, um, he was discovered in, at a basketball camp by Luke Mba Ambu. Sorry. <laughs> Yo. Dude, ba, what ba, the ba, fuck? Ba, ba, okay, Luke Mba Amute. The, f the fellow native of Yaounde and an NBA player. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Ba Amut, Amute, or Amut, as his mentor, he moved to the United States, and then he became a professional basketball player. Good for you, brother. Then he went to the University of Canvas, and now he's in the NBA. Good for you, man. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. I appreciate that. I like seeing that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, good for you, Joel. You know? Good for you. I had to get that. I want to get that NBA segment out the way. I did. I even did. I even ask how everyone's like week going. How? My bad. I apologize. How's everyone's week going? Kind of went in. Yo, the NBA right now got me excited. Pause. I almost said these niggas got me excited. So I, I said a pre-pause. <laughs> I said a pre-pause. I said pause before I was gonna I was gonna pause. Menopause. What? <laughs> okay. Alright. So um I'm trying to fix this, but it's not working. Anyways, so what we gonna do today, what we gonna talk about. Uh, my bad. When if you guys are listening to the audio, it was I was just in my my sweater. You know, I'm I'm with the sweater when I come to the Beretta. Who, who's that? Is that oh that's Biggie I think. Anyway, so imagine oh yeah, one more sports topic. The Florida Panthers are hating. On Canadian citizens, because I think the Leafs, so the Leafs won. I think we're playing Florida. Hold on. I got to figure that out. Yeah, we're playing Florida, right? And it's an away game right now. So, I think. So, these motherfuckers, Florida, even though Canada, we've, like, like a lot of us, when it's winter time and we retire and we have a lot of money, we buy some property in Florida 
and we moved to Florida. There's even like some some place in Florida where there's a lot of Canadians and shit. You know what I mean? There's even a Timmy's and shit like that. So Florida, we fuck with you. You know what I mean? We're like they're probably the only the only country that fucks with y'all. Everyone everyone disses y'all every day. You know Florida man, ooh right. So these guys are are saying, you know what? We don't want no only U.S. citizens are allowed in the stadium and. Only a state like Florida would do that. Only Florida would fucking do that. I don't know anybody else would do that. Only a state like Florida. And are they playing for the whole st- I guess they're playing for the whole state. Them niggas have their own rules, my nigga. You hear about the, yo, the police chief said, if anybody runs up in your shit, that runs up in your tank, right? He said, you can, hold on. Like let's let's you let's hear from the ma- from the oh from the who pause, pause yo, yo. Ha! I was gonna say something very outlandish. Anyways, so, um, Florida police chief, and then encourages encourages residents to shoot looters. It's a quick clip. But we have received information in social media that some of the criminals were going to take their criminal conduct into the neighborhood. He has a message for you niggas. I would tell them if you value your life, you probably shouldn't do that in Polk County. Because the people of Polk County like guns. They have guns. I encourage them to own guns. And they're going to be in their homes tonight with their guns loaded. Mm-mm. And if you try to break into their homes to steal, to set fires, what you gonna do? I'm highly recommending they blow you back out of the house with their guns. You see that? This nigga don't play it. Florida got their own rules, dog. The police chief is encouraging motherfuckers. And one other thing, they can have a new law. You guys, you guys hear about that new law? Florida gun law. There's a new Florida gun law that's about to drop. So. You can purchase a firearm. You just got to be 21. So, like, I think they, they it's a new gun law, dog. So, Ron DeSantis is loosening gun laws. So, basically, he's saying you can carry a gun without a permit, without a license. All you, just buy one, nigga. So, he's basically saying, hey, <laughs> if y'all want to play around... Go ahead, have fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're allowed to have it. So if you're allowed to have it, if if, <clears throat> if you loosen the gun law, guess what's going to happen? The people that are scared of people having it are going to have their own because now they got to protect themselves just in case someone has a bad day, just in case some bullshit happens, just in case. You know, my boy, just in case... Just in case, y'all, ne- y'all, y'all ever heard of Just in Case? Y'all never heard of Just in Case? So Just in Case was this one person, very clutch. You always got to bring this motherfucker just in case. <laughs> ah, fuck you. I don't care. I don't care. That was funny. So just in case, y'all got to make sure, like, I got my straps Right, so like, I, like if I was in Florida right now, I'd have I'd have a strap right up, right, right by the computer in case someone busts in, right? I'll have one in the washroom, one in my room, one in the kitchen. Ready? And I know they go, they go for cheap over there. Dog. I get a couple, couple of them guns. Get a one ghost gun. <laughs> I'm joking. I'd never do that. Oh yeah, I'm not in Florida, so I said if I was in Florida. But yo, see my. See my shirt? See my see my sweater? I love New York, you know what I'm saying? Because honestly, New York is one of those cities that I've never been to, but I always wanted to go to. The only thing I'm scared of is the rats and shit, but I can handle rats after, if you heard my last podcast, Big Ass Rat, you know what I mean? You can go, the link is going to be somewhere below, you know what I mean? No, it's not, but just go to my channel and you'll see it. Big ass rat. So I'll be fine. But I want to go there and but I want to have money. I don't want to just go to New York and be ass out. Pause. 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 
Dude, what the fuck? I don't want to. I don't want to be asked out in New York, bro. That it's gonna be cold, 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 cold. Dog, niggas gonna have to like, what's the what's the word called? Niggas gonna have to figure out some some neck shit, bro. Bro, like imagine going to an expensive ass place like New York and losing all of your money, like everything, like you lost all your money. Everything you can't get back, plane ticket gone, and you gotta figure out a way to live until you can get another passport. I think that's how it works, nigga. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Mm, I'd have to go to Jersey, my nigga. That's one. So now I need. I need a. I need to get a bus pass to go to Jersey. And you need money, dog. I need to eat. That's when you that's when you get that's when the fasting for Ramadan comes in, bro. All them days of fasting, that's when God's like, all right, you should be good. You ate, you ate earlier, you should be fine. But the thing is, when you know you're fasting, is that when you know you're gonna fast the next day, you know you're not gonna eat shit, nada, nothing. When you know that's what's gonna happen, guess what? When you actually know, guess what? Your body prepares for it. When you don't know, nigga, you get even more hungry, dog. <laughs> oh, dog. When you, when you're like, yo, I'm about to fly. <laughs> you go to, <clears throat> you go to the airport. Like, I think, I think if you lose your ticket, you're good because most people get it by email now, so you can just check your email and get a ticket or call your travel agent or whatever, and they'll resend you a ticket, whatever, as long as you can match the IDs. But if you don't have your passport. Nigga, you gonna be ass out in New York, bro. It's gonna be colder than a motherfucker, dog. Colder than a motherfucker. You're gonna be on the street fucking freezing, right? <laughs> and then you, you're gonna hear, like, you know what I'm saying? And you're gonna be like, yo, where's that coming from? And then you're gonna be like, yo, where's that coming from, dog? You're gonna hear sirens and your shit. Like, nah, nigga. You're gonna hear, like, a bunch of, like, homeless people just screaming. Nah, I'm not ready for that, bro. A bunch of, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? Hey, shut up! Damn, I can't shut it up. That didn't work. Nope. Well, I guess they're gonna keep whispering. Okay, my bad. I'm never pressing that button again. I'm trying to fuck with my flow, my feng shui. Hey yo, what's the dilly yo? We going in, nigga, for really yo. What's that shit called? Buster Rams? Nimmy nimmy semi nimmy in the million. When I keep on going, I'm on the video. <laughs> Yo, so we're done with sports. Now, speaking of health and wealth, Lil Wayne apparently has not eaten fast food for 20 plus years. Take off, please tell them. Cap. I, like, for real. Like, Cap. Because there's there's no way this nigga goes on tour, everything. So apparently he stops the tour bus, has a chef on there, and the chef cooks. Now, if you go 20 years back, 2003, Wayne was on fire still. He was on fire in 2003. So I'm pretty sure he's been eating good most of his life. So it does make sense for him to say that a lot. So, you know, I'm just saying cap just to, like, fuck around. Pause, but... He, there's, there's no way there's no way that he's that it's cap because he can afford it my me no my po ass can't afford that shit hell no mm mm no way can't afford that that that's like the way I do it since I work in the kitchen I just once twice a week I'll eat a like I'll try to prep like something healthier. But anything deep fried, like I, some, I some, now I'm getting to the point where I'm craving it. So then I'll go to a fast food joint or something. But other than that, and that's like once every month when I go to a fast food spot. And then once I get that that shit over with, I'm like, all right, I'm I'm good. I'll eat my my food at home. Anyways, so we got the Godfather of AI. Anyways, we're done with, with, with Lil Wayne. I was just going to say, obviously, he got it. Now, okay, fine. Let's go back. Imagine being that rich. <laughs> and that's it. 
Okay, now we have the Godfather of. Remember what I told you guys about AI. Remember, I, remember what I said. I said, "Yo, AI is gonna be the death of us. AI is not gonna be good for us. AI is gonna be sickening. All this other shit. Niggas didn't want to listen to me. Niggas thought I was capping or something." Where I was just this crazy guy on the internet, just speaking all this shit. <clears throat> like, woo, they're coming for you. No. So, the godfather of AI leaves Google and warns of danger ahead. The person, the godfather of AI is telling you this, okay? Jeffrey Hinton. Oh, Jeffrey. Oh, that's why a nigga's name is Jeff, but G-E-O-F. Oh, yo, Yo, so here, take this in. This is the reason why I'm saying this. I worked with a manager, right? And everyone's calling him Jeff. So in my head, it was J-E-F-F, -F, right? So one day, someone was, he was calling someone on their phone and someone was showing me something on their phone and his name popped up. And I looked at it, I was like, is that Jeff? Like, I was, I was trying to read it, like, is that Jeff? She's like, yeah, it's Jeff. I was like, oh, why is his name spelled like that? Jeffrey with a G-E-O. Anyways, was an artificial intelligence pioneer. In 2012, Dr. Hinton and two of his graduate students at the University of Toronto, ooh, it originated here, guys, created technology that became the intellectual foundation for the AI systems that the tech industry's biggest company believe is a key to their future. On Monday, however, he officially joined a growing chorus of critics who say those companies are racing toward danger with their aggressive campaign to create products based on generative artificial intelligence, the technology that powers popular chatbots like ChatGPT. <clears throat> He said he quit his job at Google where he has worked for more than a decade and became one of the most respected voices in the field. So, he said, I console myself with the normal excuse. If I hadn't done it, somebody else would have. <laughs> so, he is basically saying that you can't prevent bad actors from using it f for bad things, right? Also, so he's saying there's a big big risk to humanity as well because him he he figured that if i well if you look at it like this he had different reasons for creating the ai right and there's always gonna be a few bad apples in the bunch a few dumb motherfuckers a few idiots a few they don't care about humanity they don't care about people that are going to use the AI as a weapon. They already started doing that. You already have people sending you like messages talking about, I'm, I'm your dukes and I'm stranded here. You can send me some money like via, via text. Like my boy just showed me this. Then you have, you have freaking, um, what's that other shit? This one lady. Someone called her. She picks up. It's her. It sounds like her daughter being frantic on the phone, saying, "Yo, I got kidnapped. Blah blah blah. I need money." She's on the phone. Like she's like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Everyone around her is like, "Yo, what's going on?" She's like, "Yo, call my daughter." They call her daughter, and they figure out that <clears throat> her daughter is just chilling. So it was AI. So someone used the daughter's AI, or like not the daughter's AI, but the daughter's voice. To say some shit to the mom, to mimic through the phone or whatever, it's, like that is crazy. And the, the fact that they have technology like that, because I know they already. Because think about it like this: voice mod. You could switch up your voice. Like I have the app right now. That's the app that I use. You could switch up your voice at any time. I don't want to fuck with the settings in the audio, but I could switch up my voice at any time, right? <clears throat> I don't want to switch the uh, switch up my voice, and then I'm talking like. T pain for the rest of the fucking part. So it will sound weird, trust me. So um anyways, if someone could just literally <clears throat> record your voice, your vocal patterns, your inflections, you yelling, you going off, you worried, you all this shit. Maybe I should stop acting on the podcast and shit. Nah, fuck it, I don't care. And then someone gets a hold of your mom's number or whatever. And they call your mom, and it sounds like you. And you're, 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 uh, yo. What if your, what if your Dukes has like a, like a bad heart? 
or your or whoever your loved one that gets called what if they have a bad heart and they get a heart attack from that shit you know what i mean and then next thing you know like all because you wanted to get a you wanted to milk a couple dollars off someone this the thing about some of these scams that piss me off is like you're just trying to milk some money right but you're milking money off of innocent people if you're going to scam Go ahead, be my guest, but scam like corporations, scam like people like that have insurance, that they, they can get their money back. Scamming people that can't get their money back and that's their life savings and all that shit and you're using like you're using like their loved ones as like a as like a fucking what's the word called? As like blackmail or as like, you know, like as a way to be like, "Hey, Send me some money or this person's not going to be okay. Or let's say you get, you know, those emails you'll get. Oh, you, you, you didn't pay this. You got to, you got to email us back or whatever the case may be. You guys are just trying to hack into your computer, take your money and then leave. And then you can't get your money back. Now, if it's through your bank, if you give the person the money, you can't get the money back. Unfortunately, if you hand someone money. And they run away with it, <clears throat> like you can't even get a hold of them or anything. That money's gone. That money, you could sue them or whatever, but like you're better off just saying that money's gone, right? But if the person takes the money out of your bank account, then you can get your money back. There's a way. There's ways to get your money back. I think in uh, Canada we are. Your checkings account insured up to like $700,000 or some shit like that. <clears throat> so worst case scenario, you have $700,000 in your bank account. Split it between the checkings and the savings. I think both of those $700 each, $700,000 each. You keep a cool one point five in there insured. You know you're good. Then you keep one other bank for like investments and shit. You know what I mean? Savings, investments, play around a bit. I don't know. Whatever you whatever you like. But the goal is to do that. You know what I mean? You get two bank accounts, one for investing and playing around with and spending money. The next one is just for saving. You know what I mean? Saving, saving. You know what I mean? Anyways, my bad. I went off on a tangent there. So AI is gonna be the de death of us. Also, University of Texas. Yeah, yeah, these University of T's, man. University of Toronto making the AI in 2012. Then you have the University of Texas. These guys need to chill. They made AI that can read your brain patterns. So it's going to know, it's going to anticipate, it can anticipate what you're going to do based on your brain activity. That is crazy to me. So that means it, if, if you have a certain level of, of brain activity that they deem is maybe harmful, threatening, right? You never know. If they, they can maybe use this AI to like put like, to like use this as a way to like get a warrant to, to monitor you. I'm telling you or something like that. I, this is this, somehow, some way AI, cause it's, I think, I think there was a case where the police used, I think the camera had facial recognition. So facial recognition, that's, I think that's AI too, right? Facial recognition. So this one dude got arrested in the next state and they arrested him for a crime that happened in another state. And he wasn't even, never even in that state, but only because he looked like the dude that did it. The facial recognition, they don't have the, the software is not proper yet, as you can tell, but it almost matched, but it matched with the next nigga. And that nigga got, he got arrested. <clears throat> He's out now, but, but you see what I'm saying? Like this can get out of hand. If you have, cause <clears throat> what if like, what if like police don't like someone, right? They can figure out a way to use AI to get them to criminally ind indict themselves. And then, and until they figure out a way to differentiate AI and not AI, until they have technology where you could read, 
if you like scan something, you could tell if it's made with AI or a human or not. Till they have that, you know them, you know when you like sign up for something and it says I am not a robot and you click that shit. Now, before I used to be like, why the fuck do they have this? Now I'm like, holy, yes, put that everywhere with this AI bullshit, yo. How are you gonna make technology that can read your brain pattern? You guys keep fucking around with shit. You have the Boston the Boston Dynamics dudes creating robots. Then you have the, the University of Texas creating some next AI and the University of Toronto that helped create it, birth it. And then, so what if the AI, the, that's going to become the brain because in a few years, the AI is going to become smarter and smarter. Whatever thing, this, the way the AI works <clears throat> is, is that at first it doesn't know how to do shit. Then you code it. Then it starts, then you code it. You give it a goal. For example, the AI is supposed to grab this, grab this remote and pick it up, right? That's what you're trying to, that's what, that's the AI tech in whatever the fuck you're trying to put, put it in a robot, robotic arm or whatever. Grab the remote and pick it up. At first, it's going to be shit. It's not going to be able to do it, but it's going to know its goal is to grab the remote and pick it up. You code it, you code it. It's going to figure out ways, different ways to do it. Then eventually it's going to be sick at doing it. Then eventually you can throw the fucking remote up, catch it, and do sick tricks with the fucking remote. Then eventually it's going to be too advanced for the remote. It's going to want something else besides the remote. Like, y'all don't, y'all, y'all ever never seen no sci fi movies where this, like, I can already see this shit getting out of hand, yo. <clears throat> I already don't know if, if, when, if someone's tweeting, if someone, someone's tweeting me or commenting me or, Sending me a DM or whatever. I don't even know if they're fucking real. You know what I mean? Half the people that are online that I may even like acknowledge or whatever that, that, that I haven't met in real life. I don't know if they're real or not. Who the fuck knows? I've never seen these motherfuckers. Right? However... Most people that I talk to and shit is people that I've seen. People that I know. <laughs> because... Everything else, like, I don't fucking know you. You don't know me. Like, what are we doing here? Like, it's, like, why are you trying to trip me out? Like, what are, you, what are we doing here? So this AI shit is just, tri- is, it's too much. It's, it's, we're getting to a point where y'all are doing too much and we need to chill out. Okay? All right? Like, for the love of God. Like, even the, the man saying, like, this... <clears throat> This is going to end badly like the god one of the godfathers of AI man he's trying to warn us just as much as this doctor is trying to warn us yo loneliness poses risks as deadly as smoking a, a surgeon general warns like why do they why do they always have to compare everything to smoking sitting down is the news is like having is like having a pack of cigarettes a day. If your job is to sit around every day, then it's like smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Nigga, first off, I'm a smoker, so why are we equating everything to smoking all the time, man? Why can't we say it's the new, I don't know, bronchitis <clears throat> or it's the new slow death? Why don't you just say slow death? I ain't got to compare everything to smoke. It's like smoking. No, it's put slow death. Loneliness. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> so loneliness poses health risk as deadly as smoking a dozen cigarettes daily, costing the health industry billions of dollars annually. About half of U.S. adults say they've experienced loneliness. We now know that loneliness is a common feeling that many people experience. It's like hunger or thirst. It's a feeling that the body sends us when we need for survival is missing. Millions of people in America are struggling in the shadows, and that's not right. That's why I issued this advisory to pull the, back the curtain on a struggle that too many people are experiencing. Well, <clears throat> first off, the pandemic did not help. The pandemic did not help with that. So I could, I could totally I understand. I, I, I get it. I, well, I, li- I live by myself, so honestly, it's nice. I don't really give a fuck. It's pretty, it's pretty decent. I get to chill, do my own thing. If I leave something here, it stays there. 
Um, every now and then, I don't give a fuck. I'm not one of those guys like, yo, man, I wish I had a chick here. Nah, man. For now, fuck that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when I, like, no. No. I'm not even thinking about marriage. I mean, like, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a bunch of money and everything. So, that loneliness thing is, is not in, that's not in my cards. Like, that's not me. Experiencing it and feeling it, yeah, okay, we're human, whatever, it happens. But every night and shit, like, no, I'm not one of them niggas. Fuck that. <laughs> so, that was a nervous laugh. That was a, that was, that, was, that, that, that laugh was kind of nervous there, bud. I felt that, I felt that. <laughs> so, this is what we're going to talk about today. We got more topics. Just let it breathe. Just let everything breathe. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Pause. Um. So, this nigga quick. Go. So, yo, imagine... <laughs> Your father. This is your dad, my G. This is supposed to be your dad, your the your the the one person you that you look up to, the one person that look, you know what I mean? Like it's your dad. So Meghan Markle's dad. Imagine your dad doesn't fuck with you. Meghan Markle's father does not fuck with her, which is crazy because the man is ill right now. And he's like, yo, I refuse to let this bitch bury me. Basically, that's what he's saying. I refuse calling his daughter that, basically. You can basically say that at this point. If you refuse your own daughter to bury you, you know what that means, right? Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't fuck with her. All I'm just saying, oh, he's not even black. If he was black, I was going to play this clip. But he's not black. I was going to play this. This is a sick Negro. But he's not black. Either way, you're a sick ass person for doing that. Because you're on your deathbed. Anybody that is on their deathbed that's keeping the same energy is gangsta. I don't, yo, I don't give a fuck who you are, where you're from, or what you be. I don't care. Shout out to the Backstreet Boys. But yeah, <clears throat> pause. But yeah, um, there's no way in God's green earth that if you still have the same energy on your deathbed you don't feel no empathy towards that person no remorse no nothing you're about to die like like you like even if you forgiving this person could save your life could change your mind state could change your spirit a little bit and you say nah fuck that it's up and it's stuck Till I'm, till I'm in the ground, and I don't want you at my funeral, and I don't want you to bury me. Who? Damn, my heart, my heart goes out to you. So, your, your husband's people don't fuck with you because I think that's the same thing for with with uh, with uh, with the queen. Am I am I correct? Didn't the queen say the same the same thing? Like, yo, I don't want your wife coming over here too. On her deathbed, yo, these, yo, bruh, the father and the queen said, yo, don't bring this bitch here. And these people on their deathbed, yo, oh my God, that, that's, that's gangsta. And what did she do? There's something that we don't know. There has to be something that we do not know about her that, that has people just Shunning her and shit. I don't know what it is. Who knows? Uh, I'll do some research, actually. We'll do a little bit of research on that. Meghan Markle shit. Because I don't know why. Like I don't know why they're beefing like that. It's weird. It's weird to me, man. I don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. I don't know why people be doing that, man. <laughs> Anyways. So... What we're going to talk about after that, like, yo, like, I don't even, <laughs> like, what else is there to say? Like, you, your dad doesn't fuck with you. 
and says, hey, man, I don't even want you to bury me. Like, that's just, to me, that hurts. That just hurts. Your own father? Your own father said, nah, man, fuck you. I'm on my deathbed, and I have constant hate for your ass. Speaking of consistency, <laughs> speaking of being consistent and saying, you know what? I want to feel this feeling for the rest of my life forever and ever and ever. You ever just like have a great day and you're like, I want this to happen all the time, every time, right? So Joe Mellon, former member of the 1960s Acid Revolution, this nigga, you know what this nigga did? He drilled a hole in his head. You want to know why? He wanted to get constantly high forever. So he drilled a hole in his head. That's the fucking story. The man wanted to get high so bad and con consistently high that he said, I'm going to drill a hole in my head. He's willing to cause brain damage so he can be high for the rest of his life. I don't get that. I never thought it was that serious. It should never be that serious. Now this guy. This is a sick Negro. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's no, there's no way you're doing that. I feel like it's a bunch of cap, but whatever. I feel like it's just cap. But I just thought y'all niggas should know that. A man, like. We know fiends, we know drug addicts, we know heroin addicts, we know all crackheads, all them motherfuckers. An acid head, I didn't know an acid head was about that life, about that life. I thought it was, I thought, I thought it was, there was levels to this shit, right? I think it was like, like, coke, coke heads on the bottom, because coke, there's functioning coke heads. Coke heads and alcoholics are like, you know, because... Because some alcoholics do coke and some cokeheads you drink drink. So it's like, you know, it's like that with them too. But then if you keep going up to like the higher, higher up people, you got your heroin addicts, you got your crack addicts. And then you got, I guess you got acid addicts because to be addicted to acid, I guess that's what he said. He's like, yo, I got a permanent solution for this. If I'm gonna wanna get high every day off this shit, I got a permanent solution. Let me drill a hole in my head. And let's see if that works. And that's the story. Idiot. That I don't know what else to tell y'all, man. I just thought y'all should know that. You know what else y'all should know? You know what else y'all should know, man? I don't even know if I should bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up. Hey, yo, Lil Meech. Lil Meech. Oh, man. You got caught slipping in the Selena Powell trap. She put her trap card up today. So, Lil Meech was caught slipping. So, apparently, Meech and Summer Walker are a thing, right? Lil Meech and Summer Walker, right? So you see Summer Walker with the chain, you know, the BMF chain and shit like that. So Selena Powell posts a picture of her with the chain and a video of her sucking his dick <laughs> on, his, on her OnlyFans and posted it. Like, girl, girl, come on. Loud, yo, Doug, loud and ting, nah. Well, honestly, some Summer Walker's probably going to make some fire music off of this situation, but come on. What are you doing? What's wrong with people, yo? Sometimes I wish people just really understood, like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with him? How stupid can you be? Anyways. Because it's like, your post... They're not, no one's even focused on you and shit. And then you're like, I don't know. We're like, guys, look. Look at me. Look at me. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Like, come on. I sucked his dick. Like, <laughs> like, why the fuck do we have to know that? And you know when people just be like, 
be like, yo, like, I'm going to post it on my OnlyFans and so people can pay for it so they can see, like, Lil Mish getting it. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Anyways, speaking of come on, Pornhub. They blocked access for people in Utah because of the new age verification law. So no Pornhub for you. But does Pornhub really know that, okay, even though there's a new age verification law, the people are going to get around that. There's there's um, VPNs and shit. So you can change your fucking IP address to Canada or somewhere out of state. And then you can still have access to, to Pornhub. Like, so either way, this whole, the age verification law, like I get it. I get why they're doing that is because so people under the age of 18 can't have access to porn and shit. But if we're going to keep it a, a thousand, kids going, kids going kid. If they want to find that shit, kids are going to find it somehow, some way, especially with like, yo, as a kid, I would probably know about VPNs and I'd probably have my shit on a VPN by now. Like, my, my computer setup would be fucking immaculate. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. So. What we're going to do is we are going to give a couple of round of applauses to Boosie. <laughs> Boosie. Boosie badass. So Boosie recently has beat cancer. He beat cancer. So, um, what do you say? God great, but he tests your faith all the time. I was ready to see my cancer doctor surgeon today, but I was told he passed last year. Thank you, Dr. Wood, for always making me laugh when I was down. Respect the doctor. All right, rest in peace, Dr. Wood. You were the best. I remember you rubbing my head when I was crying before surgery and you asked me why I was crying and I told you I was thinking about all the wrong I've done in my life and you said, Mr. Boozy, God forgives and don't worry, I've done more surgeries than you've done concerts. Man. Wait. Oh. Yo, shout, shout out to you, man. He stayed up all night to get those results. Boozy is officially cancer free. Let's go. <laughs> Some good news, you know what I mean? Some good blood clot news, you know what I mean? Oh, man, good for you. Good for you. Good for you, Boosie. I like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like I like seeing that type of shit. Love it. What I don't like seeing is the fact that a kid... See, see remember when I was talking about washing dishes and how... Key it is to teach your children that they need to wash dishes. They need to do their fair share, right? They have to, right? And the earlier you teach them, the more they're used to it, the less they're combative about doing it. Yo, can you wash the dishes? Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'll wash them after I wash, wash this or whatever. When they, the older they get, the more they'll compromise when they're going to wash the dishes. But just make sure you wash them that day. If it's too full... Then just go ahead and might as well get her get over with it and wash them. But if it's not that full, just a one two in there. She's telling you to wash. Ah, whatever. You know, you wash it later, right? So, stepdad pulls up. Man like man like fucking Teddy pulls up to to little Michael and says, "Yo, little Michael, right, these aren't their names. Little Michael, wash the dishes." Little Michael's like, "Nah, I'm not gonna wash these dishes. You wash the dishes. They're your dishes." He's like, yo, you're going to respect me and you're going to respect your mother. I don't know why stepdads always like to throw the mom in this. Like, no, no, no. You came and started beaking at me. And now you're trying to throw mom in, Mama Dukes in this. Nah, man. I'm not letting that fly. We're not doing that. So what you end up doing is, what you end up doing is, usually wash the dishes and cuss them off in your head. Have a little argument and leave the house. Maybe a little fisticuffs. Depends on your relationship with your stepdad. This little Michael went, ah, 
smooth criminal shot his stepdad over that shit. Literally. Said, I ain't washing the dishes. You know what? How about you wash yourself off? Bow. Like, God. Like, bro. That's crazy. Telling you, these kids don't give a fuck. And we need to stop letting these kids have access to these guns like that. Because the child does not know the consequences of his action. He thinks he's just shooting. He's watched probably a bunch of movies where someone gets shot and they survive and whatever. But this is real life. He could have died. I'm not sure if he's dead or not. But, like, why do you, Why does the kid know where the gun is? What? Just in case an intrude? No, the kid should not know where the gun is. And the gun should always be concealed. Should never... Like, the kid should not have access to... The kid should not even... Touch the gun until until the kid knows right from wrong and like yo relax. Heated argument. The kid pulls out a gun. All right, America, fuck yeah! <laughs> shout out to my American uh, listeners, you know. Shout out to my Canadian listeners. Shout out to the couple people in the UK. Shout out to the few people in uh, things like India, Somalia. Shout out to everybody. All right. So, Boosie's cancer free. Kid shot his stepdaddy over the over the dishes. Like, and it's not like the, those accidental shootings that are happening. There's a shit ton of accidental shootings happening where people are just accidentally pulling up to the wrong place at the wrong time. And the person there freaks out and just shoots, panics and shoots. If you're constantly on your phone, right, and you're re- looking at the news and you're reading the news in your area, in your country, whatever, and you're constantly seeing, yo, stabbing here, shooting here, robbery here, da da da. The more people that live there, the more fucking updates you start getting, right? So imagine you get ten updates that day, you're on high alert, and someone accidentally. Hops in your hops on your property, and you're already fucking scared, cowardly scared, obviously. And you start you just start shooting. So everyone everyone can have guns. It's easy for everyone to get guns, and on top of that, people are fucking shook. So they're they're trigger happy. Everyone's trigger happy and shook. So it's like it's it's scary over there right now. It's scary. Like there's a six year old. That found that found a gun, shot her, shot her, shot her, his teacher, shot the teacher. The teacher's like, yo, what the fuck? Like, imagine that your teacher is chilling, you're doing a lesson, and little Jimmy comes out of nowhere with a gun and shoots you. Like, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, I think she's suing or something. It's just crazy shit to me. It's crazy. Shit crazy, shit, shit crazy, as Uncle Murdo would say. And then you got Vice. Vice is going bankrupt. I never, like, who would have thought Vice? Because Vice News got got um, canceled, and they're preparing to, to file for bankruptcy. So, ah. Vice Media Group, the company behind popular media websites such as Vice and Motherboard, they're preparing to file for bankruptcy, citing with people of knowledge of its operations. The media firm has received interest from five companies that might consider a sale to avoid bankruptcy. So they're all oh, they're trying to sell their shit. But these niggas, you know how much they were worth? They were worth five point seven billion dollars. That is crazy to me to be worth that much money and to just for your shit to just go down. I think the pandemic fucked them up too. Because their their new their news website and most of their shit is like them traveling and going places is vice and I don't I don't know if Vice is Canadian but they do have Vice Canada or whatever so I'm pretty sure they got fucked over with the pandemic the pandemic like let's like let's if we're gonna go I mean, I shouldn't even said that but that that shit fucked a lot of things it's a lot of people's shit over you know what I mean. Because for fucking, sorry, Ugh. for Vice to go bankrupt, 
and they're they're like an internet site that they had they I think they have a channel on cable, but now they don't anymore. I guess I don't know what they're gonna do. I think BuzzFeed is wants to buy them. If Buzz BuzzFeed gets a channel on TV, I don't even know if they have one yet. But yeah, yeah, we know he's trying to watch that. And then you got well. Yeah, like, they had Deza Samara on there, but they're gone. They Like, a bunch of shit that they had that was on there is, like, gone now. So, I don't... The only thing they have is Vice News. That shit was proper. Um, they do their little, like, reports. I like that shit. I, I still watch Vice still today. So, it's like, what are they going to do if they're going to go bankrupt? What you going to do if your son's at home, crying all alone in the bedroom, and he's only... And the only thing he's thinking about is when a man. Anyways, I don't know. They're going. They're going bankrupt. You know what I mean? It sucks. Just like how Selena Powell was sucking Misha's dick. Anyways, um, a Michigan school bans backpacks because of guns. House. Wh- why? What is the so? You think if you ban ba- backpacks, that's going to prevent a, a mass shooter or, or guns from, from coming in the school? A mass shooter is going to walk in there. Oh, there's no backpacks? Okay, I'm just going to walk in there with a gun. Like, or they're going to work a way around it. There's probably going to be certain satchels or carry-ons or whatever the fuck that you could bring to school. There's no way what well, you think people are just going to leave their backpacks in their car and carry all the book. Like, what do you mean you're banning backpacks? How does that work? What are you guys going to do? Is everyone going to leave their textbook and then take photocopies home every day and then bring them back? Or like, what do you, what system are you guys going to do? I'm just curious. Who the fuck knows, man? But to ban backpacks is just, it, it, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. It really does not make sense to me. Oh, shit, the Met Gala happened. But, like, I'm not even, as you can see, I'm not even a fashion fucking guy. So, does it, does it really matter? Does it really matter that, that we talk about the Met Gala? Like, nah. All I could say is, this is all I could say about the Met Gala. Ha! <laughs> Gay! <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, that's all I can say about that. Oh, I completely forgot. Dog, I completely forgot to talk about this in the beginning topics because I rushed through that one. I could, well, I didn't rush through it, but I really wanted to talk about the NBA first. Completely forgot to talk about this. Dylan Brooks, right, got his ass banned, basically, from... The Memphis Grizzlies. The Memphis Grizzlies have informed pending free agent Dylan Brooks that he will not be brought back under any circumstances. Any. Bro, that is crazy. He was riding for the team, riding for the paws, riding for the brand paws, riding for John Morant paws, all of the above. And guess what? Guess what he gets in return? Bat in the face. And guess what he gets after that? Get the fuck out of here. He got kicked out. And he, that's probably why he, he left. He probably... The reasons why he was leaving so early and he's like, fuck this, I'm not addressing the media is because he knew that they were going to kick him off the team. He knew he wasn't going to come back on the team. So that's on him. Do I feel bad? Yeah, I kind of feel bad now, but... Hopefully he gets on a, another team and he still gets his money, you know? I'll never wish a nigga not get his money, especially a Canadian basketball player. Like I'm always gonna I'm always gonna gonna fuck with him. Now everyone is saying that he, he's gonna go play for the Shanghai Sharks next year. Hopefully he still plays for the NBA, yeah. Let him get his money. But yo, for for I've never seen this in my life where someone gets under any circumstances, he's not returning. I've never seen that ever. Never seen that. I've seen teams... I've seen, like, LeBron came, left. 
I think D Wade did that too. D Wade went to went to Cleveland with Bron and then came back came back to Miami and finished his shit off in Miami. You know what I mean? So pause. You know what I mean? So like, end of the day, I don't get it. I don't get it? They could have just, you know, they could they didn't have to say that. Just let Dylan Brooks say no. He's not coming back to Memphis, or just say no. Dylan Brooks would not. Why did you single them out too? I don't know. I found that weird. I found that hella weird. Anyways, we're going to end it off with me saying this. AI is going to be the death of us. When I say us, not me, y'all, I'm taking my ass to Africa. No, I'm joking. But yeah, AI is, is, is going to be dangerous and everybody keep your head on a swivel when it comes down to AI. Any image you see, Take it with a grain of salt. Don't, like, now, this whole social media shit, fo- you thought Photoshop was, you thought you, like, now, before you could be like, oh, I know when it's Photoshopped, now you have to detect AI, and the AI pictures are getting way better. The AI pictures are getting better. The videos are spooky. I seen, they tried to do a beer commercial video, and that shit looked crazy. Like, I almost... Nightmare fuel, let's just put it like that. But everybody, right now they ain't got the videos. Once they get like the deep fake, deep fake videos where a person can just actually know they already have that, but it costs a lot of money right now. But once it starts to get, because think about technology, it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Think about the first camera, right? Technology comes big, pause, and then it gets cheaper and smaller as we go, right? So I'm just saying, everybody. Make sure that you that you you understand what I'm telling you. Anybody that texts you and it doesn't sound right, they they use Chat GPT. <laughs> Anybody that sends you a picture and it looks too good to be true, that's AI. And just keep it like that. Don't believe shit because you can't anymore. It's over. You got you got these assholes using it, calling calling people up, faking it, saying that oh my, I'm your daughter, I'm kidnapped, and you think it's them, and then you send money like. They already got a bunch of old people. So I'm just saying everybody need to keep your head on a swivel. Stay safe out there because the internet is not playing anymore. It's not fun anymore. It's not fun in games anymore in terms of when it comes down to this AI shit. They're laying off a bunch of people. There's a lot of jobs that are going to get replaced because what's the fucking point if I can just get chat GBT to do all the shit I want it to do? Them intern, them little intern office work that they would make you do, like create a sign or whatever, like nigga AI, and then you pick which one you like. Like it's gonna be. I'm just saying, there's a lot of people you're gonna have to get more creative to get your foot in the door now, especially your corporate. These corporate jobs where you're just sending emails and writing shit, motherfuckers are gonna you're gone. There's some jobs like I've seen corporate. I fed these niggas. Pause. They, yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was crazy. That was crazy. But (laughs) they, some of them, they, they, they're just there. They're just there to chill and get, eat, get their salary, clock out. That's it. So some of them motherfuckers don't even need to be there. Get your money, but at least look like you're working. You know what I mean? So look, you can keep your job. That's what I do. Fuck. If there's nothing to do. I make it seem like there's always something that I'm doing. Duh, it's rule number one if you want to keep making hours and keep making money. Anyways, that's a little dose of Ebs. This was the IVP with Dr. IBZ, the Imperfect Vent Podcast, episode 132. Hope y'all had a good one. Hope y'all, y'all stay tuned. Um, we are out. Peace out. Stay tuned. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Peace. Peace and love, man. You already know. All right.